Another aspect of the molecular structure that we can talk about is crystallinity. So this deals with how densely the polymer chains can be packed uh, into space. And we talked about this already a little bit in the context of polyethylene, where if you remember, high-density polyethylene has an architecture where this flexible chain can uh, densely pack to the point where it can form a, a semi-crystalline uh, arrangement. But when we talk about crystallinity in polymers, it's a little bit different than what you might think about in terms of a crystal lattice from uh, you know, a, a small molecule material. We're not talking about uh, individual polymer molecules arranged on a lattice. Instead, we're talking about zones where the polymer chain folds into an arrangement that creates something close to a lattice. So it creates enough short-range order uh, at a well-defined length scale to mimic uh, a lattice arrangement. But the size scales of the lattice uh, for a crystalline polymer arrangement are going to be larger than the size scales for a crystalline lattice of an atomic material. So, for example, you know, like a silicon, crystalline silicon, you have silicon atoms arranged on a lattice. Here you have the polymer molecule folded in a way that creates some periodicity in the structure. So this crystalline domain then gives the material uh, special optical and uh, mechanical properties uh, associated with that structure. The other kind of behavior you can think about is if there's no possibility to form a crystalline arrangement. So this is kind of the bowl of spaghetti picture of uh, polymers. And we talked about this in the context of polystyrene, for example, well, where, remember, we have this bulky, uh, rigid, a ring a side group that prevents this folding from happening. Uh, so again, remember I talked about that in the example of when you're wearing a big backpack and you're trying to fit into a crowded room uh, and you keep bumping into people. Uh, so you can't really arrange, uh, fold into an arrangement like this uh, because you need some space for the side group to fit uh, in between these gaps. So that's kind of the picture of amorphous material. So these have no preferred direction of order. Uh, and this is more like what we call a glassy state. Uh, so here, uh, again, polystyrene is an example, uh, and that gives uh, different properties. So this can be optically transparent, for example, uh, and it can have different mechanical properties. The nature, thermodynamically, of these different phases uh, can be seen in how they respond to changes in temperature. So if you heat up a crystalline material until it starts to flow, goes from a solid to beginning to flow, that's called a melt transition. You heat up an amorphous material also, it will go from start solid at low temperatures and begin to flow at higher temperatures, but we call this a glass transition. And these are actually two thermodynamically different states. And we'll talk about that more uh, later on in the course, how these are different, but it's an important distinction uh, between the nature of the structure at the molecular level of these materials and how that affects their thermodynamic behavior uh, in response to temperature. Another way that we can classify different kinds of materials is in terms of their phase behavior. So this refers to how different polymers uh, might interact with each other in a mixture or how they might interact with a solvent or some combination of these kinds of interactions. So this is important when you're trying to make blends of different kinds of polymers or you're trying to dissolve a polymer in a solvent so that you can produce something, maybe a thin film or a sheet or something like that. Uh, these are important things to understand. So there's two possibilities, either the polymer uh, and the solvent, or in this case, two polymers, A and B, uh, can either mix together uh, uniformly or they can phase separate. And this depends, again, on the nature of the thermodynamic interactions between these components. If these polymers are similar in the sense that they have uh, in characteristics of their uh, atomic level structure that are similar, uh, in other words, there's no repulsive interactions between these uh, two materials, then they can intermix. But if they're different, say they have different charges uh, or other uh, attributes that make them uh, thermodynamically unlikely to, um, uh, to form a mixture, then they'll phase separate. So you'll have domains rich in A uh, and domains rich in B. Uh, 
So this would be uh, undesirable if you're trying to make uh, a material that has uniform properties uh, throughout. So you might say, I want to make something that has some uh, softness, so I'll add one polymer, uh, and but I want to make it uh, also have some rigidity, so I'm going to add another more rigid polymer, uh, so I'll get something with properties in between. Well, it's not that easy. Actually, it turns out this is very complicated because actually uh, intermixing of two polymers is not really the normal kind of thing that you encounter. Uh, so this is why we need to understand this very carefully because if we want to make blends, uh, it's uh, very critical to understand. And again, this has to do with the thermodynamic nature of these interactions and also the chemical structure of these two different components.